Hey guys, welcome to the Insiders of Omaha podcast. I'm Christian Morrison. This is Tyson Compton. We're excited to bring this to you. Thanks for watching, viewing, and subscribing. Hey, Insiders of Omaha is a one-of-a-kind podcast here in Omaha, bringing you an inside look of the movers and shakers in Omaha and what they're like and how they think so you can learn from them as well as get to know them and have a personal time that you usually don't get an opportunity to have. And we look forward to you guys listening. Heck yeah, let's go. Boom. I think part of life is about manifesting your totally. destiny, Agreed. right? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, 100%. so I never knew all those words. We need to get started. We're getting some really good yeah, stuff. Yeah, we need to cut this off. This is good sorry, content. Sorry. Is you already recording? Okay. Oh, this is We great. can even just use some of this. Yeah, content. okay, perfect. Um, but just to get started <laughs> so, into it, instead of, <laughs> instead of, we'll cut out whatever we need to, and you can review it. Um, but just to get started, are you cool talking about kind of overview of where you're at now, and then we can kind of dive into sure. the past of it later? Yeah. Okay. Well, we got Marianne here, Marianne O'Brien, who owns OBI Creative which is a brand strategy and marketing company and personal brand company. And I believe on your website, it says something about energy as well. Energy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what it says about energy, but hopefully we have good energy. Yeah, it's just about, like, We create the energy to. <laughs> oh move yeah. Like yeah, that on yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. Like we we talk a lot which about like momentum mm -hmm. and pushing brands forward and mm -hmm. growth. So, yeah. yeah. So give us like the overview. What is OBI doing right now? What'd you take it to? Uh, OBI is a full service advertising agency for most people. That's what they think about when they hear our name. Yep. Um, but we also do a lot of brand strategy work and even business strategy. So, um, OBI has been in business for 21 years and over those 21 years, we have always rooted all of our work in research. So we're a customer research based marketing firm, which is a little, you know, today that's a little more normal, but before that, that wasn't the case. Ad agencies were, many of them were started by creatives, great creatives. And then you'd go in and get really great creative, but um, I'm not, I can't draw a straight line. And so I'm not exactly creative when it comes to like art. I'm more creative when it comes to business. And so I, when I started OBI, I, I understood marketing, um, but I had worked at Gateway Computers for years and Gateway had at that time had the resources to do lots of customer research. And so when I started my own ad, ad agency, I only knew how to do advertising with customer research. And so I sort of had to reverse engineer like, oh, how do we do that? How can we how can we make sure that, you know, whether you're a really Fortune 100 large brand or a small brand, how can we use research to inform the brand strategy that then informs the marketing strategy that then informs the tactical execution. So we're a little more, dare I say, like sophisticated marketers mm -hmm. versus you just kind of a hit and run where you come in and get the creative. Um, at OBI, we have etched in the concrete floor. Hope is not a strategy because mm. like to us, hope is not a strategy. You know, I we don't, that. I don't hope that your advertising works. I want to know hand on heart that your advertising oh. works. So, so. Quite, uh, curious. So something I've, heard a lot in marketing or just decision making is um, e emotions make you act facts make you think you absolutely know? so how do you guys uh, how did you guys come into using the data uh, factual data strategic data and then implement it so you could strike emotion to make action it's a great question and it's that's absolutely accurate so emotion is where action happens mm -hmm. facts are like just think of yourself where you check the box, like, okay, yeah, mm. yeah, factually that works, factually that works. But where I really make a move is some emotional connection, even in a personal relationship or, you know, in a, in a buying decision. So because we do so much market research, we track, cause we do a lot of journey mapping. Have you heard of a journey mapping? So no. we're tracking each step in a customer's journey along the life cycle. So okay. from yeah. the point where they consider the brand to the point where they stop using the brand and every brand intersection along the way, every touch point along the way. So we actually, when we first started doing journey mapping, we would track every step, but today we track every step and we color code, whether it's fact-based step mm. or it's emotional. So we know within the entire journey of a customer, what matters when. So what do we need to say to drive action and when? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's, so, so cool. that's so funny. I didn't know I had a term, Yeah. but something that I started doing in real estate in the last like three years heavily is when clients walk into homes, I say, I want you to walk me through your day in this house. Ooh, so I talk so to them about, hey, and then I ask them, I'm like, is that necessary? Does it have to happen here? Because people are so stuck yep. on certain things in their current home. When they're trying to move to a new space, is it necessary to have what you already have or do you need something different? So yeah. great. So it was really interesting. I'm in journey mapping. I'm like, we need to know that your life functions in this space. 
And we do that by going through the, the five days a week when you're most busy in here. That's Monday through Friday, work, shipping out kids, getting them in and out, getting breakfast ready, laundry, all that stuff. Ah, it's interesting. I think that's brilliant, actually, because you're also putting them in the sp mm -hmm. space mentally. mentally yeah. And and I mean, what if you were able to get that information before they got there? you know, from them. Like, what if you had a little questionnaire, like, yeah. a, you know, and just walk me through your week and then you get, you don't need, they don't have to think when you get there, you can prompt them and they That's start what to I do, feel. Actually. I mean, in the beginning, I like the idea of doing yeah, it in their head, great. Though, mm -hmm. like when they're there, because it's more like they can visualize it. Mm -hmm. But I do it in, in the beginning, like when I first meet with them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, walk me through a normal day in your week mm -hmm. and what's important in a house to you or whatever. Yeah. You're the and yin then, by yang. <clears throat> yeah. And then when I, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why we're beautiful together. Um, no, I, I didn't think about it that way, though. I didn't yeah. think about it. I just thought because about it. Because every touch point visualize. isn't always an emotional touch point. You right. know, there just aren't, not yeah, right, everything's right. emotional. Or and not a circumstance. We just do it because it's there. It just is what it is, right? Mm. But there's still like you have to know that knowledge is power. So yeah. when you when you know what matters at each touch point, then you can totally. intersect them yeah. with the right message. That's so. cool. Yeah, she said uh, talking about like hope is not a strategy, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny to me because when you said that, I immediately thought of other real estate agents because, and I think marketing companies are the same. Like be, since the internet, every freaking twenty year olds try to start a marketing company. Yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I know like 30 people that try to start a marketing company at some point. And I'm like, they're just starting it to try to get someone to pay them a thousand or 10,000 a month. Yeah. That's why they're starting it. Yeah. And they don't know nothing really. Like the data, definitely not. They're running these random ads for that, companies. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it is based on hope. Like, totally. And I don't know, I'm completely biased, but I've just watched over the last 21 years, businesses grow and thrive and knock it out of the park once they finally take the time to understand what matters to customers. Totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really isn't rocket science. Mm -hmm. It It's like, okay, uh, there's a human truism. If you ask someone a question, they, they will respond. Yeah. So just ask, ask your customers what they want from you and they will tell you Yeah. and then listen, mm -hmm. you have to listen and then do something with that information and deliver. Yeah. And deliver. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you ask, listen and deliver, uh, you'll win. I just heard this quote yesterday that said the best <clears throat> the lead generation is customer relationships. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Delivering on what The best saying, advertising right? is yeah. word of mouth. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can spend a million dollars on Google ads, but right. if you get somebody that says hire Marianne, mm -hmm. yeah. she's great. Yeah. We, yeah. we grew 80%. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. Yeah. So have you ever had a campaign that you have, you know, quarterbacks and you're like, did really well, but you realize like, and that wasn't us. It was like, this, this product's that good and the word of mouth is that strong. Yeah. I mean, I, we are integrated marketers. Okay. So that means like we wouldn't just do one tactic. Oh, you're do full. So we do full campaigns. Yeah, and sense. so I always say, you know, so like we have a lot of clients who have grown a lot and I'm very proud of that. Like I, I, my, I don't want to work really with you if you don't want to grow. Right. I mean, yeah. why spend the why money? Would why yeah, would you, there's like, I need, I, I get bored if we're right. not growing. Mm -hmm. And so, so I've had a lot of clients that have grown a lot. And I always say to my team, like, we weren't the only reason they grew, but we were absolutely part of the absolutely. equation that yeah. helped them grow. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, honestly, I think they grow because they do the research and they understand who they are mm -hmm. and why they matter. Mm -hmm. And then they have, I call it like it's swagger training. They have they have a different confidence about them because they know who they are and they know how they fit into the ecosystem of, you know, their industry or the world. And then it's just easier for them to be who they are. Do and you once help them you figure are, that out? Yeah, that's what we, that's, Got I it. think that's what we're great at. So and we use research. I mean, we use customer insights to help figure that Interesting. out. Interesting. Uh, yeah. How much of that comes into, or how much do you kind of dive into almost the, the business itself, the psyche, the culture, the the values that this this yeah. I mean, you I do a lot of value learning, mm -hmm. like learning. Hey, I've, the clearer I can get on my values, the clearer and freer I am to maneuver. Yes. And so I started hearing. I love the you know the, you said values equals swagger, and that is I'm like, yeah, totally. You yeah, walk in the totally. room like I don't I know who I you am. Feel good, right? You know who you are. Yeah, strut, you know what you stand swagger, for. Swagger, yeah. So I, I I was just curious when you ask. You go in and you talk to their marketing board, their CEO, and like, you know, the, the, the panel of people you have to present to. Are they ever like, what? Yes, always. <laughs> I bet. Yes. Yeah. We do a lot of education. Yeah. I mean, we really do. And 
what you when you're talking about the values we call that brand strategy mm -hmm. so and unfortunately marketing has all these terms that right. yeah. you know don't you make a lot of sense to, to everybody yeah. else but mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. real estate does as sure. well yeah. and so for us um, brand strategy is like your brand position what position do you own in the market what what makes you so unique that you know mm -hmm. if you weren't here the world wouldn't be as good mm -hmm. that's how deep and soulful mm -hmm. uh, will go on the brand strategy and then what are the values that uphold that position and then what's the promise that roots you in that position? So like it, the, the promise of Disney, for example, isn't magic moments. That's the position. The promise, the brand promise of Disney is safety because you cannot deliver magic moments if it's not safe. So what holds their brand together is really the promise of that brand. It's not something they talk about. It's just how they behave. It's their North Star. So every new ride that comes in or every new experience that somebody's pitching Disney, the first thing they do is decide, is it safe? Because if it isn't safe, there's, uncertainty. there's no magic moments. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff that we, we kind of get to the root of in brand strategy. And then what are the values? You know, is it, is it trust? Is it um, uh, empowerment? What are the values mm -hmm. that matter to that brand? Mm -hmm. And so uh, most of the time when we are talking about that level, that's very sophisticated marketing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that every year. You do that like once every 10 years. Mm -hmm. yep. um, w when we are talking about that, we're talking about it at the CEO and you know executive leadership team level. We get brought in by marketing and they want us to do a campaign. And then we start asking questions like, why do you want to do this campaign? Mm -hmm. What is it you're trying mm -hmm. to achieve? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh man, we don't really have our foundational value system set or it's old and yeah, it needs to archaic, evolve. Yeah. yeah. And you so do this then, before they're a client. Yeah. Yeah. I usually it's yeah. so the sales cycles isn't short. Um, sometimes it is. If you have a really sophisticated marketing team, it can be very short because they like, they, they know that the way that we do it yep. is, I'm sorry, I don't mean to no, be yeah. so confident, but it. it is the right way to do yeah. it. Yeah, sure. So they, they understand the value mm -hmm. because um, most of the time clients that come to us aren't always that so, as sophisticated because if they were, they would already have this. Sure. Um, we have to spend some time helping them understand like, okay, well, we probably need, you don't want us to just come in as experts mm -hmm. and build this for you because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be authentic. So we need to go talk to your customers. We need to talk to your employees. We need to, you know, sort of get mm -hmm. under the hood and understand what, what drives you, what makes you tick, what, what's the soul of this place about so that you can get to that consistent sort of laser focused message mm -hmm. because that's, that's the key to marketing. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what your message is, it's like a shotgun. You're just mm -hmm. trying, you're just swinging the bat at a whole bunch of things. Yeah, right. True. And so if you finally figure it out, it makes all your marketing dollars so much more effective. Mm -hmm. So trying to get them to understand there's an investment up front, but it will pay, you know, a hundredfold yeah, down. Yeah. Down, yeah. yeah. So, and you can see it like, I, I, you can see down Dodge Street, the clients that we've worked on, yeah. you know, and how they've grown, mm -hmm. for, you, you know, since we started working on them to date. And again, it's not all us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have clients international, so it's not just Dodge Street. Yeah, but right, right. to me, when I look at, mm -hmm. when I look at, you know, are we doing what, are we doing a good job? Are mm -hmm. we being good fiduciaries of mm -hmm. these people's brands? Mm -hmm. um, I just look at growth awesome. as my sort of barometer. That's cool. the one measurable thing, right? Yeah. That you can easily measure. I think getting that in the beginning, like would almost be worth people's oh, money gosh. regardless. If even you without, even if you did nothing else. In the else. beginning, mm -hmm. you just can't afford it. That's the part. Because it does take, I mean, it's a lot most of man people hours. can't yeah. afford it. It yeah. is. It's just, it takes man hours to do the research. We, we spend, you know, six, seven figures some years mm -hmm. just on subscriptions for research wow. because we like to overlay the data mm -hmm. with third awesome. party data. Yeah. So we're really like, hyper focused on mm -hmm. let's get the insight and let's let that insight drive the strategy. We don't want to use hope as our strategy yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. because Assume it's a lot of money to idea. spend money, you yeah. know, to, to do advertising. Mm -hmm. So, so what is OBI creative about? Oh man. Um, if you dig into your own brand. Yeah. Oh, our brand, we're all about growth. So our promises, you're going to grow. Okay. Like that is, we know everybody at OBI knows that we're about growth mm -hmm. um, or about good, responsible growth. Mm -hmm. And it's not growth for growth's sake. It's growth to like help the community, help our, Impact. help our neighbor, help mm -hmm. our families. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is, you know, growth for good. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, that's when I really started to look at what mattered most 
to, to me. And a lot of times it is the founder. Like I, as I'm a brand strategist, so I will go back to like, who founded this? Mm -hmm, What was this about? What, what really mattered to them and Mm -hmm. how can we emulate that? Mm -hmm. Because that's what people got behind. That's what they rallied behind. So I, even having to do it for ourselves, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, I had to look back like, why, why do I, why do I care so much about advertising and doing it right? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it really is for me, I want to help businesses grow. And I know that there are no nonprofits without for profits. And so this is a city that is so giving and Mm -hmm. it's so rooted in nonprofits, but I often remind my people like, guys, there is no nonprofit without for profit. And so we have to help our for profits really grow so that they oh, can point. fund so the flywheel of, mm-hmm. you so know, true. giving. So. so you said, uh, oh, you've been doing this over 20 years now. OBI. Yeah. Yeah. What brought you back to Omaha or to Omaha? You originally from here. Like, what, how, how did you move uh, back? Yeah. So I grew up in Spencer, Iowa, okay. which is like Northwest mm-hmm. Iowa. And, um, I moved with gateway computers. So mm-hmm. that was my first job out of college. Um, so I was with them in South Dakota, mm-hmm. North Sioux city, South Dakota. And then I moved with them to San Diego, California. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then I left. You hated San Diego. I hated it like everybody, you know, I mean, it does, it sucks, but, uh, (laughs) um, but I, I, I left gateway, um, and I moved to San Francisco during the dot com kind of craze. And Mm -hmm. I started, um, an, uh, internet company called, uh, hotpaper.com. And we were, it's a much better story today. And if you've, if you've read anything about me, you know the story, so I won't waste too much no, time. But share, it was like the first, yeah, yeah. we were the first, one of the first wireless app companies in the world, uh, which awesome. is way better today. We didn't know what we had, but right. we did get bought and it was really cool and it was a great experience. And so here's this, you know, girl from, you know, Spencer, Iowa, mm-hmm. went high tech, then went super high tech. And then, um, hmm. you know, uh, the company that bought my company, um, was out of New York and they were called go America communications and they were, um, figuring out how to aggregate voice and data. Um, and so like hyper, hyper tech, this is 20 some years ago. And then, um, and I ran for them, I ran sales and marketing. So I was traveling the world because there was a lot more voice and data work going on in like Asia than there was here. So I was spending a lot of time international and I loved it. But, um, uh, at Gateway, I had just learned like how to take care of a customer. And at Go America, I learned like what happens when you don't take care of a customer. Interesting. And so like my truth, my truth is like a deal's a deal. Like I don't need a contract with anybody. Yeah. I know we should have contracts, yep. but mm-hmm. for me, if I shake your hand and tell you I'm gonna do Same. something, yeah. I'm gonna do it. 100%. It's just who I am. And yeah. that wasn't how they were. And I was running sales and marketing. And so it was very confusing mm-hmm. to me because at Gateway, our ideology is aligned, our value mm-hmm. systems aligned, mm-hmm. and at Go America they didn't. And um, you know, I liked the people there and everything, yeah. but they, it was just a different culture. Mm-hmm. Totally. And so after my two years, that like I had to stay mm-hmm. for all this stock and stuff, I left, and um, I was like, "What am I going to do?" You know, I, I'm. I wasn't even. I don't even think I was thirty yet, and um, I had you know a little bit of money, um, and I I were I didn't have a lot of money when I was a kid, so I didn't. I was like, well. You know, this isn't going to last forever, but I just need a mental break. I've been traveling. Mm-hmm. I was tired. And so I um, moved back to San Diego because I love San Diego. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to just hang out for a couple months, figure out what I want to do. And the founder of Gateway called me and he said, um, he was a good friend of mine. He is a good friend of mine. And he was like, hey, O'Brien, I heard you retired. You're way too young. <laughs> um, I got this idea. You want to come back to, um, gateway and help me figure out how to sell digital home to the masses. So digital home today is like your TV working with your PC okay, in your home. Okay, okay. But back then, like we couldn't, we had to do a lot of research right, right, to figure yeah. out how to, how to like make sense of that. Yeah, so this, yeah. I was like, Oh my God. Well, I don't want to go backwards in my career. I remember saying that to him. He's like, I don't give a shit what you call yourself, Marianne. If you want to be a consultant, you don't want to come back and work at Gateway. That's fine. I just need somebody I can trust. Do you want to run this division or not? Yeah, so sure. I was like, sure. And he's yeah. like, well, what, what do you, you know, then just come up with a company name and we'll get all that stuff worked out. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm going to be O'Brien Industries, Inc. Because since the third oh, yeah. grade, I'd been signing my name, Marianne O'Brien, CEO O'Brien Industries Inc. New York, New York, one double oh six nine. Like I, yeah. I was visualizing before I before knew that was even yeah. a thing, and so um, I was that annoying kid that you know I wanted to be a CEO. I had no idea what it meant, and and, and but I, now I was gonna ha- start my company. So that's, that's how awesome. my company started. So to get back to your question, 
So I was in um, San Diego. I was working on this entrepreneurial project within Gateway. I was O'Brien Industries, Inc., which is OBI, OBI creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was figuring out how to run a business and hiring people. And um, my husband, he's my ex-husband now, but my husband at the time got West Nile. Mm. So mosquito bite. Yep. And it was debilitating. It was like Dang. he he was in a... Um, became an encephalitis, mm. so uh, infection in your yeah. brain. Oh, wow. So really scary. He had like last rites. He mm. was in intensive care for uh, 25 days yeah. in a coma for 18, like wow. real Dang. sick wow. guy. Yeah. So um, when he got out of the hospital, uh, I couldn't take, he couldn't walk, talk, breathe on his own. He had a feeding tube. I was oh like, God. I mean, here I'd been rolling in my career. And then I just hit, you know, like when it's icy and you're sliding down yeah, a hill, yeah. I hit a pat patch of grass. <laughs> it was like, Oh my God, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah, so yeah. I, my sister was here in Omaha and I had to make a decision. Did, was I going to um, move to Minneapolis where his family um, was or was to get help? Yeah. Or was I going to move here where my family was? And I picked Omaha. So I, and I picked Omaha mostly because my sister was here, but also because of the airport. So mm -hmm. I just want to shout out mm -hmm. to the Omaha airport yeah. <laughs> yeah. because today, o, o, you know, OBI now our headquarters is here. Um, and I, I don't know, but I think we're one of the largest, you know, woman owned businesses mm -hmm. in, in, um, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And we, it wouldn't be, if it weren't for that airport, airport we would not be here because yeah. all my clients were all over the country. They yeah. were not, they were not in, I had no clients here. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I moved here and I was going to live here for like a year mm -hmm. while I, while Jack got better mm -hmm. and I could have some help from my family and his. And then, um, that, that did happen. Then I moved I got another project in California, so we moved back to Laguna Beach, uh -huh. not San Diego, yeah, but yeah. even um, worse place. Yeah, yeah even worse. worse than San Diego. And where um, we were there for a couple of years, and then kind of I just went back and forth until my daughter was in um, kindergarten, okay. and then I had to like make a choice. Yeah, where are you gonna and stay, so right? we picked Omaha. Okay. So yeah. And she's uh, she's now seventeen yeah. and. Ready to go. Little rock star, yeah. and I'm so glad she's always mad. She's like, I can't believe you pit, you you didn't keep us in California, but Trust me, I girl. think it was it's, really it was probably good. better. Yeah. 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 But we've been doing college tours. Mm. As your, yeah, so we've yeah. been doing a lot of college tours all over the country, almost all in California, and so I think that like she will go yeah. to school. In California. She'll appreciate it more now. And yeah. I'm really excited because yeah, so I, will, visit. I will fast follow her. Yes, you will. That's absolutely true. That's great. But I will always have a place here too. Yeah. You mentioned uh, you mentioned your sister quite a bit of times. Are yes. you pretty close with her? Oh, yes. My sister, um, the sister that I moved here for passed away okay. during mm. COVID. Sorry to hear that. She had, um, it was terrible. She had uh, colon cancer and ovarian cancer. Oh, wow. And so it was like mm. literally four months. Right. So from when we found oh, out. Oh my tomorrow, God. That it was quick? During wow. COVID. So for me to be able to talk to you without crying is a big step yeah, for me. Well, so, if you had to, but she's okay. just amazing person, yeah, and recent. she worked at Boy Sound, mm -hmm. and um, she was like, she is the reason I will get to heaven because I will go on her code strings. Uh, so oh, that's yeah, awesome. so she was our nonprofit kid. Uh -huh. The rest, there's six of and us in our family. Kid. I'm the for profit, <laughs> and um, and she would say it that yeah, way. Yeah, and that's so awesome. she, you know, she was, she's, she is, yeah, yeah she definitely was. And She's the age difference reason. between you two? Four years so older than me. I always ask that because my daughters are five years apart. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, even it's not even in existence yet, so they're so young, but I just I year I just pray that they can have an awesome and relationship. My wife and her three sisters, there's three girls in their family. Super close. It is beautiful, uh -huh. uh, beyond belief, and uh, something I truly respect. And then hearing about your sisters, yeah. uh, I mean, I think that's just super cool. So I appreciate sharing with us because I would probably get, start to get teared up if I just talked about it some more too. It's such a beautiful thing. So it's such a beautiful yeah. thing, and it you know you're born like I have five brothers and sisters, and so my older my oldest sister also moved here. She was my daughter's nanny. Okay. So like my family's so wow. tight, and like I could never have had the career that I had without my oldest sister right. because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had it. I was divorced, mm -hmm. so I was I was single, and yeah. you know raising a daughter, and I could I could have never done what. I would have been able to do without my oldest sister too. So it's just amazing how, you know, having those structures in your life really matter. Yeah. And, um, like fundamental, the, like, yeah. ca like cornerstone keeps yeah. you solid, rock solid, keeps centered, you grounded, solid, calls yes. you on your BS. I was about to yeah. say, yeah, it keeps you on. That's might be most, yeah. I mean, some, something I appreciate even more. It's like, well, I'm, they're going to love me regardless. And they're going to tell me exactly yeah. how it is if I ask or if I don't. Yes, I'm they not, are. And then you need that. You need that. I don't know that 
realism. Grounding. Yeah. yeah. My sister Peggy, the one that worked at Boys Town who passed away, like she would call me out on my bullshit. Oh. All the I time. mean, and and she was the boss of me. Like she raised me, you know, because mm-hmm. she's she was my next sibling. Yeah. Where are and you in the I'm number line. five. So number I'm five? the baby, baby and yeah. then I have a younger brother. Okay, I'm yeah. the baby, he's the youngest. Okay. And so we all have our structures <laughs> yep. and our, yep. you know, our roles. Uh-huh. And so Peggy was Peggy was like this crazy women's liber. Like she would pick it in my, there were three boys and three girls. And she, if she saw any inequality in the home, she was calling she it out. She wouldn't have it right away. And if I did anything, like anything wrong, she was calling, if any of us did. So That's she's funny. definitely, I would say probably the most influential, but yeah. they all de- absolutely influenced me. In fact, I just got back from the Cayman Islands and I went with my brother and his family. Oh, cool. So we're super tight. Oh, so I hope terrific. your, I, love that. I hope your daughters, they will be. Here's yeah. the trick. My dad, um, always made us go to bed. Uh, we could not go to bed angry. Yeah. We could not. So we had to make up. We fight like cats, cats and dogs. dogs. Yeah. But before we went to bed, we were making up. And it's been like, maybe, I think that's the best thing. The be- that, that I feel like that's a life lesson that has impacted my, my life, my business, mm-hmm. my personal life, my family life. And I, I think when you mm-hmm. carry all that anger Ugh. and you mm-hmm. go to bed angry, you know, like it's just not healthy. It's so, in your brain. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I hate, I don't like being stubborn and I don't like, I mean, I'm controlling cause I'm kind of a control freak, mm-hmm. but I don't want to be stubborn because I think it really, you just, just lose so much. Yeah. yeah. And you lose time and you don't know life is fragile. You yeah. could, you know, you don't, time isn't promised. Yeah. So to be stubborn yeah. and miss that, like, mm-hmm. let it go. Who yeah. cares? True. I've, I have this weird thing where I, my whole life have, maybe this is from siblings, maybe like talking to you guys, maybe it's part of it, but I don't remember things that are bad that yeah. happened to me or that happened oh. around me. It's weird. Like people, I always notice people like this happened to me this many years ago. This, this person yeah. did this to me. I literally don't remember stuff. I love that. Anything that's it's negative. Sick. I don't remember. I would agree. I'm it's, the same. I, don't way. Know why. I mean, I, once in a while I might like, it, I, I, I might get it. triggered. Yeah. But I don't carry that. I don't. Maybe want I don't it. dwell. I just don't yeah. dwell at all yeah. on it. Yeah. I think like that's someone a trait. Wrongs me. It's yeah. a people trait. who are maybe yeah. drivers or I'm making an assumption here. But you can't carry. I think it. you're right. Talking with Positive people that you are uh, that are like, givers of energy, yeah, they yeah. just don't harbor that mm-hmm. anger, that angst, because that is, I mean that that's drag. That's drag on your yeah. body. It's drag on your mind. It's drag on your heart. Yes. And I just don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. Like there's sometimes like my wife and I are, oh, you know, you'll get in a fight or something like. I don't remember that fight. Me like, either. You know, yeah. My wife, our, her first pregnancy, she's like, I, I was not a good person. I'm like, I actually don't remember. Same. Like, like I don't yeah. remember that time at yeah. all. I, I, we have a beautiful baby. Like, that's what matters. Like, yeah. You did a great so job. True. You crushed it. You're a great <laughs> mom. I mean, like, I, that's before. Let's look at that. Look what we created. The one yes. way I think it hurts me sometimes is if people backstab me yeah. or do something like that. Oh, yeah. I don't necessarily care. Oh, then yeah. you like go back and trust and I'll them. And I'll do what's something, something with them again. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm like, true. you know what? You're, me too. Yeah. You're just a person. It's fine. Yeah, we'll figure. And out. then they'll do the same thing again, and I'm like, eh, whatever. I kind of knew. Yeah, I you know, knew, but I, I don't really care. Knew. I kind of knew. I mean, you know, yeah. well, that's right. I, yeah. I, pr- so, I prepared yeah. mentally. You yeah, know, yeah, there's yeah, something know. inside of me. I know. Yeah. You I'm might aware screw of me it. Over I'm and, aware of it, but yeah. I'm not gonna like. Yeah. I'm not gonna like screw them because no. they screwed me. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, vindictive. Yeah. I don't. I You know, I don't. I want good karma. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. You want to? You're banking on coattails again to heaven. Like I am. I am. So I gotta like. Yeah, give for the else you have to give. To Sorry, get that, there. Might been, that might have been over. Not at all. It's a <laughs> fact. You can. That's I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a fact. Cool. I was reading this book on quantum physics a couple years ago. Um, I was not reading that. book. I love quantum physics. Yeah, I know that's like, geeky, okay. but you know, quantum yeah. physics is basically the law <laughs> Just, of attraction yeah. and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I forgot the guy's name, but he's like the foremost guy in quantum physics. And he said that most people have a bad experience, and I think his example was like a car accident. Mm. You have a car accident. And then that makes you have a really bad day. It makes you have a really bad week. Yep. It makes you have a really bad month because yeah. you keep dwelling on it. And then it becomes your personality. Ah. I mean, so, yeah, oh, I like, that's wow. the trigger. Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza. Yep. Yeah. Joe Dispenza. That's the trigger. A, a traumatic Some incident. kind of traumatic event turns into a bad day, bad week, bad month, bad year. And then it, then it becomes your personality. Yeah. And I have somebody in my life that I was like, as soon as he said that, I was like, boom. Holy crap. That's exactly what happened to them. Wow. Yes. Because they used yes. to be this fun loving, joyful person. They had this really bad experience, and now they're like depressed, mad all the time. Ugh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, completely. <clears throat> yeah. There, I was. It's crazy. What was I just reading something about? Um, 
oh, microdosing. Mm -hmm. um, psilocybin. Psilocybin. Or yes, yeah. that can kind mm -hmm. of break that. Break that. Oh yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I don't. I haven't done it or anything, no, but I. If, if I that, that, not yet. I would try it. Huh? <laughs> you're at a bit. <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> Does it help? I don't know yeah. when you're 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The analogy I heard with that was if it's done properly, you think of your brain as a uh, snow covered hill, and, you, and every chance you take a, a sled down each side, this is from Michael Pollan, and it, and it creates a rut, right? Yes. And, that's, and when you take yes. that slide uh, ride again, it goes up broader than the same rut. Hmm. And if you do, and he's, you know, if you do it properly, basically what you get, you have all these like ruts where you've created slide paths, sled paths, and then you you do this micro and it's actually create a fresh layer of snow. Oh, oh, that's I like so that. good. Yeah. So you create new so paths. Visual. Create new, yeah, yes. so that was kind of like, wow. you know. Kinda, and then I, I'm a veteran, so learning a little bit. About, I don't have PTSD, luckily, but like I have friends that do. Sure. And it's like D, DMT and, and, and psilocybin and stuff like that are breaking into these yeah. new fun, ayahuasca. Yeah, ayahuasca. Yeah. Like, I've done ayahuasca. Yeah. Oh. And it what was, was crazy. Like? And it was to help. My ex-husband is an alcoholic. Oh. And it was like this. Yeah. We were he'd been to treatment so many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. We were trying yeah. everything, yeah. and it was the craziest thing I've never. I mean, it was it walk, was walk wild. Us through it. What was that? Okay, like? so we go to Palm Springs. Yeah. I retreat, can't believe I'm telling center? you guys yeah. this. So yeah. this is like <laughs> this is not, this is uh, so what is this like a, the first time or whatever. Anyway, okay. um, yeah. I'm glad uh, we brought it out of here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, so Palm I okay. Springs. So we go yeah. to Palm Springs. And it was these people from Peru, and it was this new age. We he had been to different treatment centers, you know, Hazelden, and all like twelve steps treatment mm -hmm, centers. Mm -hmm. And this was like not a twelve step. So we're like, okay, let's try something different because yeah. he wanted to quit drinking yeah. and nothing was working. And so um, they said, okay, uh, we have this ayahuasca. I had I think I had heard of it or like, but I didn't know anything about it. So they said for the spouses or whatever, if you guys want to do it, try it too, you can, because it just takes you to a different level. And so, um, but if you are, it truly does take you to a different level. But Made if enough. you, um, if- I've never done it. If I, you but I've, do I've, it. I've, I've, heard, I've heard about it a lot in the last couple of months. So I've, yeah, that's gotten way more popular okay. again. Interesting. This was, lit, this was, I mean, I mean, this must have been, this was before I had Cece. So this oh, wow. is like 20 years 25 years ago. Wow, this is okay. yeah. even better. All right. Yeah. This is it seems back like underground. It, it seems like it's taken yeah. off it a lot. It's gotten back. Yes. Yeah, it's coming back. Okay, well, so see, you were an OG. I was always an you're, early you're, adopter. You're an OG. You know, yeah. I'm on the <laughs> leading edge. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, okay so... Uh, so we go into this house. It was a house. And I remember there's like this shaman and mm -hmm. it was like dirt. It looked like dirt and they were mixing it up. And they said, if you are an addict or, you know, you might throw up from this. So here, here's where the bathroom is. And so um, they turned off all the lights and you did like the ceremony and then you drank a little of it. Um, it tastes like dirt, you know, it tastes mm -hmm. like yeah, very herbal, child. Very, yeah, yeah. very herbal yeah. and organic. Uh -huh. And then, um, <laughs> And then I felt like I just like laid on the ground and it was the most amazing. I can't, I, I okay. So I'm going to tell you right where I was. So I was laying, I was laying on the ground mm -hmm. and I was aware of what was going around me. Like Jack, my ex-husband, I think he ran into the bathroom, threw up, you yeah, know, sure. he did it, what, what they said would happen it, that he was throwing up like a lot of toxins. Wow. Mm -hmm. Me, I just laid there and I had a dream that Mary, the mother of God was like petting my head, which is very maternal to me. Yes. Like my, yeah, yeah. I like to be touched, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I'm that kid when I go uh -huh. home at 50 years old, yeah. and my mom's still like baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So Mary, the mother of God's like petting my head and I'm in awe of like her. I'm crying. I have tears. I'm so proud that she is with me. Huh. And I go to my, I, I, in this lake house um, in Okaboji, Iowa, my grandma's lake house in a bar room because we're O'Briens and there's a bar room yeah. in every <laughs> Irish family. So the o the O'Brien the Jackson bar room and there's all these people and they're all people that have died. And I mean every all, like my uncles, my huh. aunts, everybody who's died and they one by one. I'm at the bar. I'm sitting at the bar at one by one. They're coming up and talking to me and I'm saying, oh, my God, Uncle Jack, how are you? Oh, my God, Uncle Mike. All the And they're we're having a conversation. And then one by one, they're coming up, coming up. And I did you just, know all them in yes, their life. Uh, you met uh, them before. I uh, I had known all but one. And there was one person that I didn't know. And I was looking at the, and he was like a younger guy and he had these beautiful eyes and like smiling mm -hmm. eyes. And, um, he, he finally came over and he goes, you don't, you don't know who I am, do you? And I was like, no, I'm so sorry. 
He yeah. goes, so sorry. I don't know who you are. And um, he's like, I'm your cousin, Kevin. And my cousin, Kevin, had been at school. He had been hit by a bus. Oh, my gosh. He's getting And killed. he was born Crazy. before I was alive. I mean, he died before, before I was born. Because wow. I'm one of the youngest cousins. He's one of the oldest cousins. Yeah. But we prayed to Kevin. All the people in that room were the people I'd prayed to my whole life. Wow. Like, I'm Catholic. Every night before I'd go to bed, good night, Uncle Bill, Uncle yeah. Bob, Uncle Jim, Uncle Jack. You know, I mean, I would just go through the list. Oh, wow. That's who was in that bar room. And they wow. were playing pinochle like we yeah. were. They were drinking yeah. beer. They were, And my cousin, Kevin, who said, you don't know me, do you? He got hit by a bus when he was six years old. Oh, he was a God. man. He was a grown man. Wow. And I said, oh, my God, I, Kevin, uh, is there anything you want me to tell your mom or my yeah, aunt, yeah, you know? Yeah. And he's like, yes, I want you to tell. He was a twin. I want you to tell my cousin, Kathy, that I didn't miss anything. I was with her step by step. Oh I didn't miss. Oh yeah, I, I didn't miss prom. I didn't miss. I didn't miss playing pinochle in the bar room. I didn't, it wow. was, and, and he said, tell my mom I'm happy and I'm with her. And so it was like, so I did this ayahuasca. It was this re literally religious, religious experience. experience. Yeah, totally. And I came home. I remember flying back to the Midwest. I didn't tell my dad that I did ayahuasca because I didn't, I yeah, didn't know yeah, if yeah. it was a drug and I didn't yeah. really want to tell him, but I was like, <laughs> I've always been kind of intuitive and I'm like, dad, I'm telling my aunt and my cousin about um, this dream that I had. And he's like, Marianne, you were so smart. I'll never forget this. I was in my, my the house where I grew up. I'm on a big CRT computer and I'm typing at two in the morning and my dad and I always stayed up late. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, dad, I'm telling aunt, Glad aunt Nella that I, I saw Kevin in my dream. And he's like, Marianne, you're so smart. You really got to be careful with all these angel stories you have. Like people are going to discount you, you know. And I'm like, I don't, I'm, I don't care. I'm telling. Yeah. yeah. And I had been back. I came back from California for a funeral, an Irish wake. So I knew I was going to see my aunt. So I write this long letter, and I'm sure I don't even remember everything I saw, but right. everything that he you told can, me, mm -hmm. I wrote. And I go to the um, Irish wake. Everybody's sad and everything, and I'm like, Aunt Nella, come here. I yeah. got something for you. And I gave her this letter and she and my cousin, Kathy, like I said, please don't open it. Yeah, you know, yeah. like right now, we'll read it later. Well, they didn't. They went in a room. Read, they come out. They're sobbing. Wow. My dad's like, I told you not to. <laughs> and anyway, I don't know if my cousins or my aunt would tell you this, but I definitely think it changed their life. Oh, I bet it did. My cousin, Kathy, like. I think she spent her whole life feeling a closure. little guilty. She had closure. You know, she, had she was closure. a twin. You yeah, lost your empty twin. Too. Like a little bit yes. of gone. And now she didn't have to wonder. So anyway, mm, uh, for me, that crazy. was pretty amazing. I might be sensationalizing ayahuasca Doesn't a little. Matter. I don't want to Living because everybody has to do their own thing. But for me, it definitely took me to a different level. And it was not, it was a beautiful thing. Did your life, your personal life change after that point? Well, I, I 100% believe in heaven and I 100% believe mm -hmm. in angels yeah. and I 100% believe in trusting your instincts. Absolutely. And because I of that always, experience? Yeah. Or I just, or so. solidified like, even harder. I, the reason I prayed to all those people as a kid is I went to a Catholic school and I remember, I remember exactly where I was when a priest asked us in religion class, like, how many of you pray to dead people? And, you know, and nobody, you know, we're fifth graders. Nobody raised their hand. <laughs> yeah. we're, like, you know, we're afraid of dead people. Yeah. And he was like, God damn it. How would you feel if you died and no one ever prayed to you again? Like this is, there's eternal life. And I was like, oh, okay. he, yeah. number one, a priest never swore in front of me. So I paid attention. Number two, I was like, oh my God, said, you know, I don't want to leave hilarious. anybody up there without some mm -hmm. communication. Yeah. So, I mean, when okay. I go to sleep, it takes me like an hour to get through all my prayers because uh. all these people that are, so I think I might've had the relationship yeah. with all these yeah, people, yeah, yeah. you know, they were listening. With, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, That's I digress, cool. but ayahuasca, I think, I think, um, to take it to a medical physician, I, I one time got an opportunity to meet this guy who invented the medicated heart stint. Mm -hmm. And I had dinner with him and some other really smart people. And they were having this really, you know, intellectual conversation about how we know so much from the neck down. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we know so little from the neck up mm -hmm. in the, in our world. We don't know the brain. Mm -hmm. We don't, the supercomputer of our soul, mm -hmm. we don't really understand. And mm -hmm. so I think that, that was, you know, probably 20 years ago. And in the last 20 years, we have advanced. And I uh -huh. do think that there are things that can drive new pathways. Like, I don't know if it was DMT, but I, I want to call it EMT. I don't, EDT, ECTs, there's some, there's a, it's like 
shocking your brain to make new mm. pathways. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend who did it and mm -hmm. it worked for her. Yeah. Mm. And it was, it's very controversial, yep. but she suffered with depression for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like to get to a point where you're like, yeah, I'll shock my own brain yeah. to yeah, try sure. to stop. Like you're at a point where like you will shock yeah. your own brain yeah. and it works. So That's I feel cool. like, you know, I'm one of my values, one of the values that at OBI is natural curiosity. Like yeah, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I think there's so much more that we, same. we have so much more potential and so much more knowledge we could yeah. have. And so yeah. I, I would not recommend mm -hmm. people like to go do ayahuasca, <laughs> yeah. but I would say that it didn't change Jack's yeah. alcoholism, but it definitely gave me an opportunity to catch up with my angels. That's so. cool. That's did, pretty awesome. Did he only do it once? He only did it once that I know of. I mean, yeah. I don't, I think he'd try anything, you know, but, um, but yeah, I think there's like, what I really would love to do, like when I down, the, like later in my life is help with some sort of addiction. You know, yeah. I just think huh. addiction is okay. such a, it's such a struggle for mm -hmm. so many people. So, yeah. And if you could figure alcohol. out how to alcohol stop addic is addiction, one like, oh. people just literally can't kick it. It's the hardest. I mean, yeah. that and heroin, I think, yeah. are the two hardest. It's wow. crazy to me, though. Yeah. I've been to so many treatment facilities. Yeah. I've been to the family weekend on so many, at Trump, so many treatment facilities. And I remember one, it was in Southern California. I can't remember what it's called, but it was not a 12-step. And it was all about brain work. Mm -hmm. And they, they explained that, you know, addiction happens in the frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, where blinking and breathing, like, that's where, like, the uh, basic foundational stuff. So you have to do yeah. it to survive. So it is. Like, they watched, um, you know, mice uh, kill themselves over cocaine. It's, it's you know, frontal yeah. lobe. Like, mm -hmm. they, they would literally, you know, click the, yes, you know, the button, the, or whatever the button for, for more yeah. and kill themselves. And that's what OD, yeah. addiction does. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I just lost my... Um, stepson to addiction oh my god you know and like he was 36 years old oh man Dang. and there's so many of us that yeah. have it so anyway that's um, got to so be something that there's got to be some way yeah. to solve yeah. some of this mm -hmm. yeah. because we're we're really a smart species yeah. and it's a bummer. i thought you were gonna of, say ayahuasca cured him that's what i thought you were gonna <laughs> say so that's a bummer no i just i, got, I got to catch up with my yeah. angels yeah. and i it think helped it you more helped than my him, aunt like. and my cousin so much yeah. but um it didn't help him that's crazy. But I do, um, have you guys heard of like ketamine? Yeah, and yeah. I don't know much about it, but I have been reading about like ketamine. I've heard also can help people uh, reprogram their brain. Mm -hmm. um, and you're seeing on like the East and West Coast mm -hmm. ketamine uh, clinics. Mm -hmm. But again. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it, like all that kind of stuff does the same thing, but there is like brain science that I think Dr. David Buss wrote on that. If you're over 25, you have no basically no neuroplasticity left, mm -hmm. like its ability yeah. to learn new things. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I learned this when I was 21. So, so when I was 21, I was like, okay, whatever I'm putting in my brain for the next four years is, is going to be stuck in there. Mm -hmm. So I oh focus on only learning certain things, and I was like, don't learn that, learn this, don't learn that, learn this. Only read these books. So for those four years, I just focused on filling up my brain while I could, and I think it definitely helped. However, the only way to learn after you're 25, the only way to learn is through trauma. Yep. That's the only way. Mm. And so I wonder if those medicines and stuff is a type of trauma to your brain mm -hmm. that retrains it. Because wow. you think about something, somebody that goes through, like an older person can't eat to teach an old dog new tricks is because they don't have plasticity in their brain. Mm -hmm. And so like midlife crisis, all that kind of stuff is usually because they have some kind of traumatic, their mom dies, their yes. dad dies. They yes. got a divorce. Mm -hmm. It changes how they are. Like you meet people after that, they're different. Well, and trauma yeah. is referencing too, yeah. like of discomfort. By the time you yep. get to 25, you've largely set your comfort space yep. pretty largely in, in place. So yes. you can kind of, you have left and right, uh, you know, guardrails and you you can pretty much stay pretty comfortable after 25. Up to 25, it's new experience of new experience of new experience of new yeah. experience. So, you know, I'm a big person. Like you got to be uncomfortable even to like, even to like yeah. tap anything or have any type of growth, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like when you... If you can what, put yourself trauma, through trauma, discomfort, put yourself through it. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, and if you are the one that's continually <clears throat> inflicting in a healthy way, constructive about putting yourself through trauma, discomfort, you can continually grow, learn, 
be open to new things, you know, uh, reassess your own stuff. I mean, I think that's a, there's a huge element there. Working out hard and yes. jujitsu do that for me. Yeah. Totally. Cause oh. they're so extreme. Yes. yes. Yep. And like after that, I feel like a new person every time yeah. I'm like, and I learn new things right mm -hmm. after that. I can pick up things easier. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's a uh, country song that says, and I, I've heard the saying before. It was like, when's the last time you learned something new? Yeah. Or when's the last time you did something for the first time? Yes. Yeah. And that, that line in itself in terms of like fundamentally, like, you, I, something I want to pass on to my kids about always staying curious. Yes. Yeah, that is the beauty of life: is staying curious. Is like totally. in your in your friends, in your parents, in your kids, in yourself, learning new things, giving yourself permission to be a beginner again. Like that's a big deal. You know, it's a horrible and amazing yes. feeling to be yeah. a beginner. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it is. It really but you is. do learn. Like you think of your first job. Like oh, I mean, you're sure. so uncomfortable. Yeah. You don't know what you're Get doing. Fired. That is yeah. really <laughs> when you I mean, just speaking for a friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's fun to get over that curve, though. It, yeah. it is. Like right. when you're like, man, I hate this. And then yep. like after a little while, yeah. you're like, mm -hmm. wait, I like this. I know. Yeah. I'm kind of getting yes. good at this. Like, yeah. I'm good at this. Yeah. You're totally yeah. right. My, we, we went to see one of my cousins, uh, or when a couple of a month ago, we were looking. We went to uh, Santa Clara University and Stanford University and Berkeley, UCLA, mm -hmm. or UC Berkeley, but CC and I. And uh, we met with one of my cousins who is like, like quantum physics, yeah, like, like, I mean, so, like, like just, I mean, he's yeah. so smart and it's he awesome. was talking, he's, he's older than me, but he's, he was talking to CC and he said, um, you know, what I've learned in life is do the things that other people think are too hard. Just yes. learn those master those things yep. and you will never have to worry mm -hmm. again. And, and it is, it's like a lot of us repel from that discomfort. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you run towards it, if you're the one mm -hmm. pushing, mm -hmm. just, you're going to be, you know, so much more advanced right. because you're doing the things that nobody else really wants to do. Blue ocean. Well, it's yeah. almost like a, yeah, and it's a superpower. Sure. I mean, it's a yeah. super, you are putting yourself in a position of like, it is well, it's just a matter power. of, it is. you know, the guy who, you know, that guy who might get C's on his, on his test and becomes a doctor is still a doctor after the guy getting A's. I mean, but he's putting himself in a, in a, I don't know, I'm not going to be a doctor, but you're putting yourself in that uncomfortable position. I might not be exceptional at it, but I can be really, really good. And yeah. my strengths as a, as a C student, as a doctor versus an A student, might be way different and makes me an exceptional doctor too, or exceptional, exceptional at your own job. You know, the, I'm going to keep going. So I yeah. keep going, you know, I mean, okay. So just, I think it was yesterday. I love 60 minutes. It's kind of uh -huh. a, oh, really? a weakness uh -huh. of mine. Okay. Late lines, 60 <laughs> yeah. I like, I don't know what my problem is with that, but uh, it's a little primal. Cause I know my parents watched it, yeah. but yeah. I like to learn. So yeah. I, yeah. I um, so they were talking about um, uh, how a lot of how, how the, the establishment of mm -hmm. a degree, mm -hmm. a, a college degree, uh -huh. yeah. may be mm -hmm. like dissipating and yeah. may not be as important. Like, what definitely you, is. Right? I agree. Uh, like, I say it all the time. I'm like, I don't. I mean, I'm glad. I'm proud of you if you got a degree, but like, I don't. I don't not hire people. Right. I hire people because I I I feel something from yeah. them yeah, yeah. that mm -hmm. I know that they're going to bring some magic to, totally. to us that we don't have. Absolutely. I don't, it, it has nothing to do with a degree yeah. <laughs> to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, totally. I guess if you are a doctor, I'd want you yeah, to yeah, finish yeah. like doctor, whatever yeah. study. Yeah. 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 Right. But, but for Lawyer. me, I, so I, I just, I think it's going to change the dynamics of mm -hmm. our, of our country, which is Agreed. cool, you know, well, it pushes us uh, too. like going back to like education. And I, I was, I enjoyed college, but the reality was like, you learn from doing. Yes, yes. You don't, from, you don't learn from regurgitating or reciting. You learn from doing things. And the most ex valuable experience I've ever had was me putting myself out there. And I was like, well, I'm just going to figure it out and see what happens Same. on the other side. <laughs> 100%. And that was not college. That, I mean, college <laughs> provides some experiences for that to happen, but that was not inside a classroom. I, I say at OBI, and they, it pisses my people off, I know, but I, I don't like the word no. Yes. Like, I just don't like the word no. I've never liked it, mm -hmm. so I try not to use it. Yeah. So I, it, I'm more like, hmm, let me see. Let me try to figure that out. So huh. I when mm -hmm. I started OBI, you know, I didn't start, I, I didn't have a business plan. I didn't start OBI <laughs> thinking it'd be some great ad agency. I didn't, right. I mean, I, I had like three years of marketing. Yeah. I didn't know even know what I was doing, yeah. right? And, but what I would always say is yes. Like mm -hmm. I said yes to mm -hmm. Ted Waite when he called me and said, do you want to figure out how to do this? I didn't know what digital, no one in the world knew what digital right. home was, yeah. was at the time, but then we figured it out. Yeah. Then Microsoft called and said, can you help us figure it out? I didn't say no. Then yeah. Intel, you know, so like, yeah. I, I I wish more people would be comfortable figuring it out yeah. because I think that like we hold ourselves back thinking there's some framework or some 
some recipe yeah. on how to do these things. I, I, I still am figuring out yeah. how to do things. Yeah, like sure. I don't know how to yeah. do mm -hmm. everything I say yes to, mm -hmm. but I know that I can figure it out yeah. and I have confidence that I will figure out and I will be able to bring value to whatever I figure out, figure mm -hmm. out, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's what, like why it, why you learn so much on mm -hmm. the job because you have to, you have your yeah. brain, your neurons have to fire, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Would you say it's a common thing amongst your leadership team at OBI? I, well, uh, yes, similarly. I do. I think, I mean, I probably push the push envelope it a, on yeah. it. But you're supposed but, to. That's the leadership. But yeah, there, right? I, I definitely think that's a common theme. Mm -hmm. And they're used to, like, so I, again, I, I'm telling you guys a lot of things I haven't really shared with others <laughs> today. I don't know why I'm so open. Maybe <laughs> maybe because of that traumatic experience, my sister dying. Like, when you said that, like, I have grown From in that? ways that I, you know, my big ego didn't think I needed to grow, but mm -hmm. I needed to grow. God, that's and, crazy, um, isn't it? Yeah. it? It's been so painful. But so good to be on the other side and like not worry so much. I always worried about what people thought. I always worried about. Mm. I don't mm. worry. I don't. Like, really. I hope. I hope you like me. But if you don't, it's okay. Like. Yeah. I, but before it would hurt, it would hurt me if if I left here and thought like I don't think they liked me. You know, like now I can, I don't. Yeah. I care, but I don't care like it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Which sense. has allowed me so much more mental space to like get learn things, things do things, get <laughs> yeah. things done. Yeah. Um, why am I telling you this? So, uh, at OBI, there was something. What leadership were we? team. We were talking about the leadership team and never mm -hmm. saying no. Yeah. Always I don't know where I was going it. with all this, but, um, I'll find it. I'll get it back. Um, yeah, That's I don't worst. know where I was going. Sorry, I've been there. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to give you the after, space after to find 15, it. I was like, I'm like, not jumping in. Just no, let her go. Let just her be, I, this is maybe a public service <laughs> announcement for all the men out there who have amazing women in their life. <laughs> uh, women, when they hit like, uh, I don't know, it depends, but 45, let's say to 60, go through what's called menopause. Nobody yep. wants to talk about it, but yeah, it's like, it's a, real thing. it's a hormonal thing. Like you lose like words, like it, really? I used to be really smart. Like I oh, could just whip words. Then one day I'm like, I can't think of the word cup. Like how did this happen? Right? <laughs> really? Yes. So it's just like, hey, so, so, so grace. just grace. give them grace. Yeah. Tell them they're amazing. Yeah. Like, so I should just stop look, telling my mom she's dumb all the time. Or yes. What? Yes. Or like if, can't think of a cup, if, your, mom. if your wife or mom um, gains a little weight, Yep. Because they swallowed their spit, because that's what happens. All you have to do is swallow your spit now when you're from 45 <laughs> to 60, you gain weight. You don't even eat. It's the wildest thing. It took me a second. Like, I that swear to God, it happens. So just be, give them grace okay. because they're amazing. And um, so I don't know what I was talking about, but I'm sure it was really important. And at some point, I'll remember. <laughs> it's out there. There's it something about now. OBI. Uh, well, one thing at OBI that we've done, you know, in the last few years is, you know, I, I after Peggy died, I was like, it was COVID. Everything I thought I knew, I didn't. Hmm. Uh, the whole world was mixed up. And so I went into this place. I called it my opposite land. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do everything opposite. Let's see how that works. Because George it, Costanza? Because, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yes. I, did, I, tried the George, I tried the George Costanza. That's exactly myself. where it came from, huh. uh, Seinfeld, uh -huh. which a lot of my you uh, know, yeah. useful knowledge <laughs> yeah. has come from. Come from yeah. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, I, I just went opposite. Like, so I used to be like, okay, yeah, it's all about how hard people work. Now I'm like, mm, it's about how smart people work. Yeah. It used to be about butts and seats. Like, oh, they're really committed because they're here from, you know, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Now I'm like, nope, it's about, you know, like giving huh. them the space they need. Yeah. So every, like my, I had to really like question my own, I guess, beliefs mm -hmm. and I went opposite and it's, we never had, you know, last year was the biggest year we've ever had financially really? wow. ever all in the last three years. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. So that's awesome. Extra extrovert by nature. Most people think so, or, but I, I I've been reading this book quiet. Mm -hmm. Have you read it? No, it's worth a read. Okay. Quietly or around it's just people? called quiet. Yeah. Quietly. <laughs> <Sorry>. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah, we could get into that. Yeah, that's, that's, so, yeah, but, sorry. Um, I didn't need to <laughs> Quiet. I think well, I might be an introvert extrovert. I think I, I get the I energy am, of people. So I think, yeah. But when I go home, I'm like shut down. Like I have to recharge. Yeah. So and everybody I, has everything. I yeah. agree. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're. It's a. It's a spectrum. But one, yeah. you might lean more one way. We just make it so. Simple. Yeah. And we you try to put two different groups. Man, I love quiet. Yeah. My wife was like, 
you go to movies by yourself? I'm like, oh, absolutely. 100%. Like, yeah. I love that. Me Let's too. Yes. You can go on a walk by yourself without music in your ears? Oh. Like, my Jason gets his feelings hurt because I want <laughs> my to go by too. myself. My I'm like, too. I just need a minute. You know, you know you, like I've had 30 people talking all day. Yeah. So I just, me and the dogs are quiet, just going to no sneak chatting. out. The and term it's not offensive. We use in, our, in our house, I've used all my words today. I need a few minutes. <laughs> I've used my words today. I've used yes. all my words. Yes. I need, and it's just like, I like say, you can't see us, but I'm, I'm giving eye contact to whoever I'm looking at. You know? yeah. It's like, I just give me I'm maxed time. out. I'm maxed out. Yeah. I've used all my words. Give me 20 minutes. Give me I'll 20 be good. minutes. Yeah. 30 I'll be minutes. Back. Yep. Yep. I've even started the practice and I've lost the late in the last few months. I would go home, park around the block first for a solid 10 minutes. And then music. I just trying like, to get divorced or what? No, <laughs> no. Just so I didn't, I, I didn't like deliver that impact when I came in home. I yeah, 100% believe in that. And I had That's to learn idea. it the hard way. Yes. But what I do is I get in the car, I turn everything off. Yes. I, I will not take a call. Nope. No radio, even though I really want, I want mm -hmm. music. Yeah. You know, I like want Don't Pandora mean, yeah. on, yeah. like to jam mm -hmm. out, but nope. Mm -hmm. On the way home and I give myself, I do a little pep talk. Yeah. You're not the boss. Yeah. You're a mom. Yep. You're going to be oh, engaged. Mm. You're gonna, I, I, Some I mantras give that, myself, mm. I get myself into in the, the, mental mo space. the mom mode mm -hmm. because otherwise I go in and I'm, I think I'm running the show. Right. And, I, and that's not, not who I you are there. I am not running the show yeah. at home. Yeah. I don't want to run the show yeah. at home. Yeah. I want to be like a, mm -hmm. a great, I, I want to, I used to, I still say it, but I want to be where my hands are. Yeah. So if I'm here with you, mm -hmm. I'm going to be where I'm, mm -hmm. where I'm with you. Yeah. If I'm at home, mm -hmm. I want to be at home with them, yeah. not like checking texts, yeah. like totally. looking, yeah. yeah. So it's I a great explanation of being present. Like I was not very good at that. I was in the Marine Corps and my wife and I were first getting married and stuff. And she's like, I don't need, I don't need uh, the Marine Lieutenant here. Compton. I don't need Captain Compton in here. Yeah. I need my husband. <laughs> Captain yeah. Compton. Well, that's, that's, that's my, yeah, my, you know, I like brain. her. So yeah. she, I'm like, she goes, I need more flowers and lace now. Like, yes, I, you know, yes. I need, I need gent, I, you know, I, that probably made you even more mad. And then, well, then she's like, <laughs> oh, you know, you need uh, you don't say that's know, Captain Compton. Like, I need like 10,000 times less aggressive. You know, yeah. she's like, you know, yes, so it's like, it's yes. true though, but Just you're, dial it back. but the effect of like <clears throat> articulating that and be able to receive that. I mean, luckily she has the grace enough to like forgive me a lot. Cause I'm like, okay, yeah, right. Thank you for the reminder of the 10,000 times. Yeah. Reminders. And part of the nature of what we do is everybody is wants your attention most. In the evenings and weekends, yes, and yes, they want your, your attention. Yes. You yes. know what I mean. Mm -hmm. How do you guys so, handle that? Like, perfectly. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> no mess ups. Uh, uh, I mess up a lot with it. I mean, yeah. personally, I mean, am I perfect at no? I try to not have my phone at the dinner table. Yep, definitely not there. Yep. I have come to the agree agreement myself that there's necess there's not necessarily any emergency in real estate. This can wait two hours or twelve. Yeah, like right, like. You know, when I walk through the door at home, I want to be, I want to be a giver of my energy and that energy needs to be given to my girls. Yeah. And that's my Agreed. wife, my two daughters. Right. So am I perfect at No, but I do definitely try to make sure I'm bringing, I'm bringing my A game of, of, of giving my attention. I'm 10 times better than I used to be now. Yeah. I mean, it takes time. I mean, yeah. I, and, and ultimately, I mean, uh, you know, if you're the breadwinner, sometimes you, that is in conflict it's with that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Totally. And, um, but I will say that. There's two, there's two sides of that. You have that expectation for yourself, for the people you love, and then you also have to uh, you have to articulate it in a way where it's received well to the people who it does affect, which is the business side. So mm -hmm. all my clients have to have a conversation. Hey, yes. there's an expectation I have to have. I do have yep. a family. I do want to spend time with them after work. If I don't get back to you right away, I do put my phone on silent at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. I don't we'll see get it back, until yeah. the morning. I'll get back to you in the morning. I do the same That's good. You just manage expectations. You gotta try to manage. And I don't right. do that except under well, but it's trying to put some guardrails up in there. You know? The one thing that's weird about real estate is there is no emergency, but the clients don't always know that. Yes, and that's that. Yeah. And so yeah. they will Real estate's weird because it's such a red ocean in a way. There's yeah. so many real estate agents mm -hmm. that if you don't, some clients, it's rare, but some, every yeah. single time I go out of town, I'll have somebody that reaches out to me. And if I don't get back to it right away, they're gone. gone. Boom. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's you a, reminded me of the, the idea I lost. Okay. 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 So um, at OBI, yeah. I try to co take complex to simple as much as I can because it's just how my brain mm -hmm. yep. can manage. Yep. Uh, all we have, you know, eighty clients. So to make to, to try to know enough about them, I have to like 
simplify. Yeah. Yep. So I, we, in brand strategy, we do what's called building personas. So mm -hmm. personifying a target audience, mm -hmm. a customer base, mm -hmm. we do it for our clients and that helps their sales teams understand, mm -hmm. okay, this is what matters to, you know, um, micromanager Marianne. Mm -hmm. She likes yep. this, this, and this. So we, we build kind of a profile of that target customer and yeah. that can help train and mm -hmm. kind of get people in the mind space. So at OBI, I have uh, three sets of clients and what, and, and this is my simple mind. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I was going to tell you. That was so important. So I have a tequila client. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tequila, they're fast. They're act. They're activators. They hit fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they, you know, and there's it's a lot of tequila. energy. Right? Nobody sips tequila. Nobody's yeah. Nobody's tequila. <laughs> then we have we have slow gin clients. They're a little okay. slower. Okay. Right? You are Irish. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay. And yeah. then we have like a tangeray that's kind of in the middle. Like you have a little too much. It can really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you can lose some clothing. You can, yeah. you know, a lot of things can happen, right? So the, I have, you know, three sets of clients. And so we, we have little legend, like, okay, that's tequila. We're having some slow gin here. That's tangeray. And so we, so, so I, uh, I'm telling that because for those kinds of clients, yes. like I am a tequila client. Yeah. Like I love tequila clients. I'll yep. bring in tequila clients all day long Same. and I will make yeah. my people crazy yeah, at good. my, my employees because they're like, these tequila, like they just hit and run and they're crazy, you know, and then they're, 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 not me, the they're back my end, people, right? right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I understand them. And so for them, I can say to them like, Hey, look, you and I get each other, mm -hmm. but from this time to this time, I'm not, yeah. I'm probably not going to respond. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. I'm not going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. I'll hundred yep. percent. I, I will text you on a Sunday. I got no problem. But when I'm with my daughter at her school, I'm just not yeah. doing it. And, and, and so kind of understanding kind of who they are and what they need and then ad addressing the expectation with them, I think helps. Mm -hmm. So, totally. you know, maybe mm -hmm. you have some of those clients yeah. and you can kind of put yes. them into little personas and mm -hmm. say, look, I, I know that this is what you need mm -hmm. and I want to deliver, mm -hmm. but here's how, here's, here's what I need mm -hmm. from you. you know? And there's, I think, I would, I, from listening to you talk so far, I think you guys have probably done a really good job of adjusting, you say the expectation, but also delivering to how yeah. they need to be responded to. You guys have been very dynamic in that leadership for yeah. the people you work with. Like, hey, they are the tequila client, so when we bring it, we gotta bring it. Yep. And yeah. then they yep. just love it. Yeah. Right? And then they trust us they trust, fast. Yeah, and yeah. like, then, it, then they don't, that, that then constant it's easier. need is, yeah. Yep. Bring a lot early. I, we had always called it in the Marine Corps, we gotta, yeah, feed the beast, you gotta feed the bear. Yes. Because right you don't want the bear coming after you. Right, <laughs> keep them keep yep. full, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. keep them yep. full and happy. And then they get more relaxed, Yeah. you know? And then that, and then once you get trust, yeah. it's all good. Yeah, it's once you get good. trust, you have a relationship. Yeah. So if, if you screw easy. up or they screw up, yeah. you know, it's not going to be, yeah. I'm leaving. Right. It's like, Hey, what, yeah. what happened here? Yeah. So. yeah. That's awesome. Well, I, we're kind of getting towards the end. I would just say, I, you talked a lot about, uh, one line I was kind of curious about, you've been at a high performer for a very long time. What are some consistencies you've integrated into your day that you know, like, Hey, these are kind of like non-negotiable. I got to do. Mm -hmm. X, Y, Z that has allowed me to op be at optimum performance? First of all, I just want to appreciate, tell you how much I appreciate you noticing that because when you said it, it's just like made my heart warm, right? Oh. <laughs> In some time, because high performers, I think you have to be one to know one, mm -hmm. right? Like, or, or maybe feel comfortable enough to say that. Yeah. So yep. thank you. Yeah. Because it is like, I've, I, I have often said, God, like my carotid arteries hurt. Like yeah. Yeah. it's just been years <laughs> of like, your yes. arteries going wild, totally, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's like the speed I like. That's mm -hmm. and you uh, you don't function well out of it. I, I don't. No. Very I'm bad. I fall asleep yes. out of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So like I'm either mm -hmm. on or off. So mm -hmm. so how I handle it, you know, I work out. I I'm consistent in mm -hmm. in working out. Mm -hmm. I always have been. I joke that I work out so my jeans will fit, but I really work out so men for mental health. Same. It's just mental for yep. me, and I get so many good ideas when I can slow my brain down. Right, and um. I take a bath every day and I don't know, like, I don't know why, Morning, but that noon, night, afternoon, night. That right. night, and it's like a way to just like yes. let everything go. And then I can be a good human to my yep. family. Glass of wine. Are you just, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah okay, of course. Yeah. Yes. I never <laughs> used to, but ho it happened in COVID. And um, so I am, you know, uh, Irish. And so I really have to watch and I have a lot of addiction on all sides. And so I, I, really protect myself from myself, I think, oh, when it comes comedy. to addiction. So mm -hmm. I, I always have monitored what I drink or, you know, 
what I what I get too into because totally. I don't I gotta balance that. Yep. So for me, um, during COVID, I sort of didn't care, and so I wasn't like drinking so much, but I was drinking more, more than, than I norm, did, same. you know. And so after after COVID, I was like, you gotta you gotta like yeah. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not yeah. gonna be yeah. a 50 year old alcoholic. Right. Like you know, <laughs> right. I'm just not right. gonna do it. Yeah. So I um yeah I drink probably you know maybe. A half a glass of wine, a glass of wine, yeah. you know, yeah. three nights a week yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. If I go out with my crazy friends, this, us women at our age, like we're so much more confident now, yeah. you know, yeah. so then I could get a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my hangovers are so bad that it's, it's not worth it. it. No, I don't have any game in that area. Yeah. So, yeah. so I do, I, I, um, work I definitely again. work out. I um, take a bath, take night. a bath. I drink some wine mm -hmm. and I just try to connect with my child. I really get, okay. I love, cool. I love her. Like, yeah. and I love Jason, my fiance. Yep. I mean, I just, I like to spend time Jason's with my Jason's a great guy. Yeah. He's, guy. He's such a yeah. good guy. So I, so what I'm hearing there is there's an element of, of exhilaration to speed up, to slow down. Yeah. Right? I was just about to say speed up, slow down. Yeah, yeah, right? And then, then, Same and then work, uh, yeah. grounding with people that are close to you. They're going to yes. love you regardless. And then the last would be um, there is a decompression point to be able to relax and 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 quiet the mind. You probably don't have a ton of problem falling asleep. No. Right. So like I have no I, that. Uh, I think <laughs> when I say the reason why, because some people do. I like know. Some people really I feel so stir. Bad for but them. what I what I'm just recognizing or just kind of anti is like for those people that, and you you said too. Hey, I might do the opposite thing. Some people might need to do the opposite to figure that piece of it yeah. out. Otherwise, you just can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's I think that's good. You've kind of established that. And um, you go into the office every day? No, I go into the office a lot, though. I, mm -hmm. I get energy from people. people so yep. I know if I if I need like to get mm -hmm. amped up a little, yeah. I'll go into the mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Uh, we're hybrid, so people can come or not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I what I find is that I don't even really leave my office when I go to the office because my days are so full, which I want to get a hold of. But mm -hmm. um, but there's just something about the kinetic energy of other yes, people. And, there's yeah, an energy yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we house electricity. That's yeah. kind of why, like, so me coming here, right, coming to Omaha. Yes. I was originally, like, I had all, everything planned out in my head. I was like, okay, yeah, here's my exact strategy when I go there. Like, I just knew exactly what I was going to do. But then I started thinking about it more, and I was like, ugh, I'm sick of doing stuff by myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, real estate's very lonely if you're it just is. a solo yes. mm -hmm. preneur, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, okay, just do the same thing. You make good money. You have no financial worry, but it's just like annoying. It's like boring almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a mundane, mundane drum. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what to do. You just, you just do it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> and then me and Tyson, <clears throat> we had no intention no. of like teaming up. <clears throat> and then through like a random conversation, me and him started clicking, clicking. And yeah. then I was like, Dude, the energy is awesome in yeah. this conversation. Very, very. You know what high. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to be like so much more fun. Yeah. Yes. And so I was like, dude, you want to just partner up? And he's like, sure. And you know, like when you have yeah. that energy, it's so easy yeah. to uh, say yeah. Like, yeah. and then like that momentum just yep. like mm -hmm. is the flywheel totally. that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. takes you to a the momentum level. we've gotten like a week. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Got a lot of stuff done. Yeah. It's I'm excited wild. for you guys. Yeah. You, you, you're both amazing, and Thank you. I know you're both successful. And you're just like, it's just, it is going to be a lot of magic. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Well, we really appreciate you coming in. Yeah, it's uh, been amazing. Uh, been a, this has been this is our third, fourth podcast. Yeah, oh, awesome. and this has been by far my favorite one. Oh, this is awesome. so good. Yeah, people are going to. You really destroyed my parents' podcast. Yours is way better. Yours is way better. <laughs> You, as a well, trial, I love his parents. They're, so, oh, they're, they're awesome. all my best awesome. friends. Yeah, so. yeah, yes. uh, but well, Marianne, we wish you the absolute best. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. being vulnerable. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your candor, your time. We know you're busy, and uh, we hope to have you back on maybe down the road and hear sure. more about what's going on in your world. Maybe and the next one we can do inside your office. And yeah, after yeah we have a podcast Iowa room. Do you? In that my office seems awesome. So. I've seen or pictures. Or with ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid We'll take Dana. We'll do ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. And we'll just make it a crazy experience. Uh Daniel just raised his hand for that. Uh, but uh, just <laughs> so, so, so Jeff, who I do podcasts, and we've done these podcasts in here, and they even said the other day, they're like, you need to interject in these things. I'm I like, love well, it. I do not want Dude, to. Dude, yeah, I loved you today. talking even today. Even though like, I had a camera go down, just like a third of my work made this. I was like, oh, crap. This has been the best, oh, best good. podcast. Even yeah. I was like, I even got in this. Yeah, I'd love to. I feel <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, I love that you interjected. I that. love it. Awesome. It was good. great. Yeah. Well, Thank awesome. You. Thank, Thank you so you much. Again. Okay, no. you guys. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you guys. Peace. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching the podcast. Really appreciate it. As always, if you got any real estate related things that you need, this show is fully sponsored by our personal real estate business. Um, hit below where it says schedule a call with us. Get on our personal calendars. Call, text, email us, whatever's best for you. 
happy to help you in any way we can on the real estate side of things. Thanks, guys. Peace.